Imagine talking directly to your power system model. No jargon, no guesswork, just clear answers. That's the promise of Talk to Power System, using explainable AI and knowledge graphs to make sim data accessible to everyone. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. Joining me today is Sven Olsen, Enterprise Information Architect at StatNet, who's been leading this work and showing how standards like SIM, combined with new digital tools, can bring real clarity and trust to the grid of the future. Hi Sven, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's great to have you here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So Sven, just before we get started, it would be really good for our viewers to understand a bit more about your role, responsibilities and your priorities right now at StatNet. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm an information architect and uh, primarily we are looking into uh, implementing the use of the common information model, particularly in the regards to meeting regulation for um, the network codes that's going on. Um, and I'm quite involved in the work at ANSOE and then the standardization community to make sure we can meet the requirement from the regulation. Okay, great. Now, you've been working on the SIM uh, standard for quite some years now. Perhaps if you could give us an overview of what the common information model entails, how it serves the power grid and what the latest developments with it are. Oh, you gave me a big ch uh, challenge here in a very short <laughs> amount of time. Um, yeah, the common information model is is uh, an IEC standard that's been developed for almost 30 years now. Um, and I've been involved the last uh, 15. So in the bit um, uh, part, this coming uh, from the, um, the state estimator for the analytic part, but moved into the market, both the North American style market and the European style market. And we are now moving quite heavily into the enterprise part, work order, asset management, asset health, uh, to make sure that we can comply with all the new types of equipment and work that's going on. Right, okay. And SIM, of course, um, is a very robust standard. I think it's recognized as a highly reliable standard for um, uh, as a data exchange model. Um, however, it's uh, limited in terms of accessibility, in terms of the wider utility workforce uh, utilizing it. What's the work that's going on to make it um, more accessible? Yeah, so uh, one of the things we, I'm involved in is making the standard uh, more accessible to web and search possibilities. So I'm involved in, with the IEC and now also the ISO because ISO, all the ISO standard uh, together with all the IEC standards have similar problems or or challenge the fact that, you know, this legacy standards that was uh, based on uh, documents, you have a printed copy, and that's what you read. Uh, nowadays, you, you you can't print a copy before it's out of date. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea of having uh, better access to the standard is extremely important. Yes. And of course, together with that training, and there's more and more community that are starting up to provide training uh, in the SIM standard. All right. Okay. And tell us about this Talk to Power system uh, project that you're working on right now. Yes, that's very exciting. Um, so what we're trying to do is actually learn the AI, the, the SIM standard, mm -hmm. uh, rather than trying to train it on all the possibility, all the data. So by the fact that it understands the same standard, it can then actually goes in and query and provide answer on the real model of your grid or your assets. How far have you got with developing this tool? So we got fairly far, uh, but we're just halfway to the, um, and bear in mind, it's an R&D project. So it's not necessarily a tool per se. It's an R&D project where we are looking at uh, looking at what type of changes will, we might need to do to the same standard. So it's not just aim to make human understand it, but make sure also the computer can understand it with the idea that when the computer understands it, it can explain it 
to the different types of users with the different roles. Because one of the challenges when we write a particular sim, which is the cross-border between power system domain and IT domain. Mm -hmm. And if you if you focus on too much on one side or the other, you lose the other side. And AI can help doing that type of work. Do you think this is going to increase the uptake of SIM in the short to medium term? Or are there more steps that need to be taken to really make SIM um, you know, well utilized across the power grid? Definitely this type of work will not limit the, the amount of uh, utilization. But I think there are other forces that makes it more in force and that is the, for, the ability to request for conformity from the tools. Mm -hmm. um, that I think will be probably one of the main thing that would implement it. However, I'm always saying that people are a bit like the power. They will take least resistant weight. Mm -hmm. If it makes it easier to use the SIM standard than trying to develop something on your own, people will do it. So, so in a, in a way, making all the standards and the interpretation of the standard more accessible, I think that will also increase the use. And what are the timelines, do you think, for this um, talk to power system to be rolled out widely? Widely, so again, we're running everything here as an open R&D and an open source, uh, meaning that we encourage all vendors to utilize this. So it will be a continuous path, but we are planning to around Easter next year. So we will fit really well with uh, with the uh, Smart Grid Forum uh, uh, forum meeting. Well, when we think of ending kind of this project, but the idea is we're going to be pushing these things into tool vendors and the usage, and of course everything that's brought back to the same standard will come across in the upcoming versions. Yeah, and as you say, Sven, you'll be joining us at HTC 26 in Paris and you'll be presenting about this project and getting feedback. Uh, what would you like from the audience? How would you like the audience to support this project? Oh, good questions. You know what? Uh, so uh, if we try, um, we'll try to be ambitious, actually having a live uh, demo with me. And then we can actually ask uh, questions both on the test models because we're not going to be able to ask directly on our confidential model, but we have our synthetic model and also general thing about the SIM. It will not cover all the SIM, but we'll cover the analytic part, some of the assets. Mm -hmm. So that will be um, very interesting to have. Hopefully, I'm able to take a couple of questions and we can see that live going on. Great. Okay. And more generally regarding developments with the SIM model, what direction is the working group taking at the moment? What are the priorities on their list of activities to cover over the next 12 months or so? So we are in the finalization phase of uh, SIM 18. Mm -hmm. There will be quite a bit of stuff to coming on from the market side. It deals with the demand response. Mm -hmm. um, there is, uh, on the system side, we are emphasizing the, the fact that we want to make sure that the SIM model covers everything from transmission all down to the individual household. Mm -hmm. uh, SIM has been stronger on the uh, transmission side, and we are strengthening it on distribution. Uh, to make sure, and not just medium voltage, but also low voltage, which makes a lot of, of challenges. We also hope to be more aligned with other standards, like the build, building information models. So it is kind of integratable. Well, we look forward to hearing more about um, developments with the SIM model, as well as the Talk to Power System project that you're working on and also to getting feedback from the audience and seeing how they can support the project further. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sven. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Join us again next week as we unpack another big topic shaping the future of the power grid. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Smart Grid Forums, and follow us on LinkedIn. Until then, thanks for watching and listening. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.